Look at all the invasives. I'm out hunting. In my regular area where I like to hunt that's close to home. Um, and right now what I'm doing is I'm looking for summer nest. The last few years I haven't seen any. And I just saw there's nobody parked down here. I think I might hang out. There's a summer nest right up there. Let me see. I have my glasses on. It's right in between there. Boom. You see that, right? Where's my finger? Right there. That's a summer nest. And I am happy to see it. We'll see what happens. Oh, I am so excited to be out here. This is so beautiful. Look at this. Looks like the main road had a lot of work done on it. In fact, I noticed <clears throat> some construction vehicles in here over the summer, and uh, I'm sure they got a lot of damage because of last July 2023's um, rain bomb that we had that destroyed this area. I'm sure you're all familiar with that sort of thing. Type of rain that's Apocalyptic and unfathomable. I'm not going to go into that right now because I'm out here to relax and I'm looking for more nests. I just saw some back there. What I mean by summer nest is uh, squirrel nests, the nests that they make in the summer, full of fleas and all kinds of stuff. Uh, we've had a couple of frost, haven't really had. Well, maybe about four or five frosts, but nothing, no killing frost yet. But I'm sure they've moved into their, their home trees, the tree cavities. And they're all nice and snug. So I only saw that one so far. Oh, oh, here's, see that? Big snarly nest right there. That's a summer nest. A little while, all you were seeing in here were red squirrel, and that is because in 2020 everybody went ballistic and mad hat or crazy, and uh, did over yeah, limits. Everybody went batshit crazy, and they got uh, fined. A lot of people got fined for over limits, and uh, we lost a lot of the gray squirrel population. And this area where I hunt was famous for. There were, you could guarantee every time you went out that you would see <coughs> um, gray squirrels and come home with them. So they could be red. Um, not positive. Not too certain about their nesting habits. But uh, we'll find out. So let's go for a walk. We'll take the gun out and go for a walk. Small game has been going on since September. Squirrel has been going on since September. It's public land. So there's going to be a lot of commotion out here. Um, I haven't been in touch with anybody, and I haven't been out here. This is my first time for this season, so I don't really know what's going on. Um, of course, I'm here on a weekday, so that makes things <clears throat> a little easier. A little less crowded. God, look at all the invasives. <laughs> Just found another one, another summer nest. That's quite a bit. That's a lot more than I've seen in a long time, and I'm very hopeful. Let's see if I can zoom in on it. There it is, right there. Oops. This year, I'm hunting. I'm hunting red meat only. That means uh, squirrel, rabbit, deer. No birds. No birds last year. No birds this year. And the reason for that is because New York State has had a terrible problem with bird flu. Don't quote me, but I think it was a pheasant farm. I'm not sure if it was Sullivan County or, or if it was up by Rome, New York. I'd have to double check on that. 
um, but they had to kill off their entire inventory, which is a lot of birds. It was up in the thousands because of bird flu. So I just don't see any point. To add to that information, I happened to meet up with some people over the last year or so who were also hunters, and we had a conversation about hunting, and we brought up pheasants, and I said, you know, I'm not hunting birds until further notice until I know more because of the bird flu and both of them now th these were unrelated conversations but both of them said well you know that's funny you say that I didn't think about that because both of these people had hunted pheasants they got their pheasants and they you know you never know if a bushy tail is gonna hop out in the trail behind you that's why I'm, my head's on a swivel um, they ate the birds, they ate the pheasants, the ringneck pheasants, and they were so sick. And they thought it was the big C, but um, they had no proof of that, but that was their first thought. And then when I mentioned that about the bird flu, they were like, I bet you that's what it was, because the doctors couldn't even tell them what it was, which is pretty damn pathetic. And about par for the course. So I'm staying away from the birds until I know more information or the dust settles. Whatever you do, don't shoot them power lines. They do make a nice edge for the wildlife. Here though. you see all the oaks. I call those home trees. They're full of cavities that the squirrels use to live in during the winter. And uh, from what I've seen, the mass was pretty damn good this year, especially the black walnuts. The blue string means that they stocked pheasants, and uh, except for this top one here, uh, the rest of it <clears throat> looks pretty brand spanking new. So I'm looking for <clears throat> a real good um, game trail to get in, into Here these. Oh, look at this. Look, look, look. This is. Oh, no. Frickers. Frickers. <clears throat> I'm still looking for a place to sit down. This is kind of a real scrubbly area. You know, it was uh, farmers' fields, and now it's uh, since it's been disturbed, the invasive species got in, and uh, it's full of prickers. And you know what? I did my time in the prickers. <laughs> I don't want to do that anymore. Okay, so my uh, aversion to prickers has led me out. Gray squirrel, be right back. Okay, so after sitting here for about probably 40 minutes, I decided uh, I was too antsy and I hadn't been in this forest for probably the better part of three years. So I thought I'd go do a little exploring and scouting and just get to know the place again. This right here used to be one of my favorite parking spots. And as you can see, we got a, an old ash grove in there and a swamp and a lot of water and this ground is still very soft and let's see they took oh yeah oh my goodness look at this you used to be able to get through here but the beaver have looks like a lot of guys have come through here but the beaver is still around see, see the beaver wood right there wow 
this is substantial. It was worse last year, but this year, holy crow. Yeah, this is trapping territory right here. Major trapping territory. And these are, I'll pick those up before I leave. They look like somebody's <clears throat> green prophylactic gloves. And I'm happy to say that my tire is holding air on these rough roads, but they're a lot better this year. So this is where the big problem was. They, I think they have a, do they have a sluice pipe under here? Well, the whole road last year, I came through just a couple of times and it was completely washed out. Uh, all the water that we had and the beaver activity in here um, led to this road basically just collapsing. No, there is no sluice pipe, but you can see you see all the, the beaver wood in there? All back through there, the little sticks that they've been cutting off. And this looks like it's still a hazard. And this tree right here is probably taken down by then. There's a, a red cedar in there. So, yeah, the beaver is still a big problem. Look at this. That was some ash sand at one time. Look at this. Just incredible. So at one point, the water only came up to about right over here. So there's, there's my car right there. And the water only came to about right here. And you could walk through where I was just at. And you could get over into those hardwoods over there. And I used to call it the um, the fairy tale woods because I mean it's just the most beautiful hardwoods you ever saw. Lots of oak and hickory, but uh, yeah, we still have an issue here. I need to get on this trapping business and stop stop being such a putz about it. Well, I went home empty-handed, but that's okay. That's the way it goes. It was nice to be back at my old hunting ground. And one last thought. Prickers be damned.